Welcome to Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition. Today we move away from Dade and Walker Counties, Georgia, and over to Pulaski County, Arkansas, for the Battle of Bayou Forche. And I am sorry about that pronunciation. This occurred on September 10, 1863. The attacking Union forces were led by Union Major General Frederick Steele, a lifer in the Union Army who graduated West Point with extensive experience in the Mexican-American War. Unfortunately, Steele would pass away in 1868 from complications of falling out of a horse and buggy. Under him were Brigadier Generals John W. Davidson and Samuel A. Rice, along with Colonel Adolph Engelman, commanding what was known as the Union Arkansas Expedition, made up of 15,000 plus soldiers and 50 cannons. Defending against the Union attack was returning contestants, Confederate Major General Sterling Price, an avowed supporter of slavery and a dropout from Hampton Sydney College, leading Brigadier Generals John S. Marmaduke and Daniel M. Frost, followed up by the Confederate Colonel Archibald S. Dobbins, all of whom were commanding the Confederate troops assigned to the District of Arkansas, which consisted of approximately 8,000 men and 30 cannon. The victor today would be the Union under the command of Brigadier General John W. Davidson. In a long journey to capture Little Rock, Arkansas, Union Major General Frederick Steele had been pushing since August 1863 from Helena. They had been held up by the Confederate defenses on the Arkansas River, but as September was starting to go by, Confederate General Price knew he couldn't hold forever against Steele. Ordering the Confederate state of Arkansas's government to pack up, they left Little Rock while Sterling sat to defend it. To help Sterling, Confederate command had released Confederate General John S. Marmaduke from jail to lead a cavalry portion of the defenses. Marmaduke had just killed Confederate General Lucius M. Walker in a duel on September 6. The duel was one of many stupid personal issues due to Marmaduke accusing Walker of cowardice in a prior battle. Marmaduke was able to reach Confederate defenders in time for the arrival of the Union forces at Little Rock itself. The morning of September 10th, Union General Steele ordered Union Brigadier General John W. Davidson and his cavalry to attack. The Union cavalry moved across the south bank of the river in an attempt to flank the Confederate defenses. Meanwhile, Steele ordered his infantry to move forward and engage the Confederate entrenchments directly. Already ahead of the Union push, Confederate General Marmaduke began delaying attacks on the Union cavalry trying to buy time for the Arkansas government to retreat out of Little Rock. They were successful, but this was the end result of the Union taking Little Rock, marking its fourth Confederate capital taken by the Union forces. Losses were incredibly small, with Union casualties losing approximately 18 dead, 54 wounded or missing for a total of 72 casualties, while the Confederates had 12 dead and 52 wounded or missing for approximately 64 casualties. Join us again next time for Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition. Thank you.